The final update to Iceborne is here, and with it comes the toughest challenge in the game. Vitalis the Black Dragon will test even the best of hunters out there. So I'm Dable with an anti-Vitalis build for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of an anti-build or counter-build as it's sometimes known is to take on a specific monster in the game. And whilst in all honesty Fatalis can be taken on with pretty much any weapon and gear set, the builds featured in this series are aimed at making the hunt more manageable. When it comes to the Switch Axe, it's actually a very effective weapon for taking on Fatalis. But you have to make use of the Zero Sum Discharge spam to effectively take on the monster. This means that we're going to be latching ourselves onto the monster's head quite a lot and dealing the majority of our damage there. This is because a lot of Fatalis's flame moves don't actually knock you off his head, and the ones that do can be countered with various mantles. Add to this other quality of life skills, and this build is quite effective at taking on Fatalis. So for the anti-Fatalis switch axe build, you'll need the Brachidium Helm Beta, the Golden Moon Mel Beta, Ruinous Vambraces Beta, Golden Moon Coil Beta, and the Brachidium Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Evasion Charm 5, and for my weapon, I'm using the Safi Drake Axe, which has Attack Increase Awakened Abilities, a Sharpness Increased Awakened Ability, and the Nergagante Essence Awakened Ability. And when it comes to the augmentations, I've gone for a Health Regen Augmentation and Attack Up Augmentation. As for the mantles, you want to go for a Temporal Mantle and Rocksteady Mantle, not only for our defences, but also because these allow us to stay attached to the monster when performing the Zero Sum Discharge without being knocked off. So moving on to the jewels, we've got a fair few to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for Jumping Jewels for the Evade Extender skill. I've then gone for Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill, Destroyer Jewels for Part Breaker, Vitality Jewel for Health Boost, Maintenance Jewels for the Tool Specialist skill, which is kind of needed on this build, Challenger Jewels for the Agitator skill, and a Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill. As for the Jewels and the Mantles, I've gone for Heavy Artillery Jewels for the Heavy Artillery skill, as always. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have a raw attack of 1180 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You'll have 10% base affinity, which can be potentially 80% when you take into account weakness exploit as well as the agitator buff. You'll have a dragon rating of 180 with average elder seal and you'll have power files. As for your defense, you have an okay defense of 1051 that is strong against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have Agitator at level 7. Agitator is a skill that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. And as you can normally control when a monster becomes enraged thanks to utilizing the flint shot mechanic, this buff can be active for the majority of a hunt. When the buff is active, you'll gain increased raw attack as well as increased affinity. Next up is Evade Window at level 5. Evade Window is a very useful defensive and quality of life skill that increases the invulnerability frames when we perform dodges and evades. And in the case of the Switch Axe, it also applies to the little hops we can perform in between attacks. You have Divine Blessing level 5, which greatly increases the chance of taking reduced damage when you take a hit from a monster. This is quite useful as there'll be times when you go to latch yourself onto a monster via the zero sum discharge where you'll be knocked off and take a hit. Divine Blessing will give us a chance at surviving that said hit. You have Attack Boost at level 4. Attack Boost is a skill that increases the raw damage of a build and at level 4 or above it also provides us a bonus 5% extra affinity. You have Health Boost level 3, allowing our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have Weakness Exploit level 3, which is a buff that gives us increased affinity whenever we attack monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra 50% base affinity. Next up is Part Breaker at level 3. Part Breaker is a very useful skill for the Fatalis hunt. Basically, it increases the likelihood of breaking monster body parts. And when it comes to Fatalis, we want to aim to break its horns as quickly as possible. If you don't break the horns at least once by phase 3, Fatalis will gain blue flames that can really hurt our hunter. Part Breaker, combined with performing the Zero Sum Discharge, normally guarantees that we'll be able to break the horns at least once, sometimes even twice, before Phase 3 is even reached. Next up is Evade Extender Level 3, a wonderful quality of life skill for the Switch Axe, which increases the distance at which we can dodge and evade. This counters the slow movement speed of the Switch Axe when you have the weapon drawn. You have Tool Specialist Level 3, which is a skill that reduces the cooldown on our Specialist Tours, and as we want to use the Specialist Tours as much as possible, not only to increase the damage when using heavy artillery, but allow us to safely latch onto the monster to perform the zero sum discharge attacks, we'll want the cooldown on our specialist tools to be as quick as possible. However, a word of warning, when using the Rocksteady Mantle, you can still take damage when performing the zero sum discharge. 
Hence the reason why we've also gone for Divine Blessing at level 5 again. Anyway, next up you have Fortify at level 1, which is a useful skill when taking on tough monsters in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, as every time you faint you'll come back with increased raw attack and defense. This buff can be applied up to 2 times. And finally, when you're wearing your mantles, you'll have Heavy Artillery, level 2, which increases the damage from Heavy Artillery in Trade Castle by 100%. So when you're using cannons, ballista, whatever, try to make sure you have a mantle available before you actually fire those weapons. So next up, when it comes to the set bonuses, you'll have three of them. First of all is the Gold Raffian Essence Divine Blessing Secret, which allows us to get the Divine Blessing skill from level 3 to a maximum of level 5. You also have Nergigante's Ambition Hasten Recovery, which is a result of the Runa's Vambraces and the Nergigante Essence found on the Safi Drake Axe which allows us to recover health when attacking a monster, and this does work in unison with the health regen augmentation. So when we latch onto a monster to perform the zero sum discharge move, the health we gain can potentially counter attacks that aren't strong enough to knock us off the monster, but will still damage us over time, adding to this build survivability. And then finally, you'll have the Brackadeel's Will Agitator Secret, allowing us to get the Agitator skill from level five to a maximum of level seven. But there we have it, that's the anti-fatalis build I'd recommend for the switch axe. Now like I said, the main way to play this is to perform the zero sum discharge as much as possible on the monster's head or chest. So it's a case of powering up the weapon as quickly as possible with our sword attacks and then latching onto the monster to perform those high damaging moves. Playing like this with this build ensures that the hunt is done quite successfully and quite easily as well. But there are risks as well as pros and cons to every build out there. When it comes to the pros for this build, its biggest pro is how easily this build can break Fatalis' horns. Whether you're playing in a group or solo, you can easily break both the horns, severely weakening Fatalis' power in the third phase. This is all thanks to the Zero Sum Discharge move, as well as the offensive skills we have. On top of that, this build has quite a few quality of life skills for the Switch Axe, including Divine Blessing, Evade Window, and especially Evade Extender and Tool Specialist. These can all keep you alive and make the hunt feel more easier than it is. And then finally, when it comes to the pros, this build has quite a bit of health regen. Thanks to Nergigante's ambition and health regen augmentation, we're able to keep ourselves alive without having to sheath our weapon and drink a potion. But on the flip side, when it comes to the cons, the first biggest con with this build is that this build really relies on mantles. This is because the mantles ensure that we can lash onto the monster and perform the zero sum discharge attack successfully. So always try to time your mantle usage for when your file is fully charged or when you want to use artillery. And the other con for this build, which isn't really a major one to be honest, is sometimes this build is lacking when it comes to affinity based skills. Like I said, this is only a minor con as it is kind of complemented by the fact that this build has decent high raw attack and thanks to the quality of life skills and the specialist tools we're using, it means that we can deal uninterrupted damage to the monster, making up for that lack of affinity. But there we have it, at the time of this video this has been the fastest build that I've been able to take on Fatalis with. So I'd strongly recommend it, especially if you're familiar with using the Switch Axe. Just remember to utilize your mantles and perform the zero sum discharge attack as much and as safely as possible and you'll get the hunt done in no time. So there we have it, that is the build I recommend for the Switch Axe for taking on Fatalis. Now of course as you farm the monster more and more you'll get Fatalis weaponry and armor which is some of the best in the game and will allow you to take on the hunt more easily. But until then, this build will work just fine. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you an anti-fatalist build for the Switch Axe in Monster Underworld Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.